Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here from Saturday Night Stitch and thank you so much for tuning in. So today's post I am super super excited about and that's because I've spent the last couple of weeks uh, going through all of my Birda 2019 issues, all 12 of them, make, gathering all of the information about which patterns I liked, which patterns I traced out, which patterns I actually sewed into and which patterns I cut. I haven't sewn yet and also looking at uh, all of the birdie things that I made in 2019 so it's a long one but it is awesome and it is amazing so grab your cups of teas and coffees and we'll get started and we've just had a change of scenery because the lighting is a little bit better in here okay awesome so the irony of it is today i'm actually not wearing any birder clothes this is my mccall's m6886 and this is another mccall's jacket that i made for the pattern review sewing bee way back in 2015 but because i get quite cold and i'm wearing something that's quite thin i have this jacket on okay so uh so first of all uh, I just want to say that I absolutely loved going through and preparing this video and I am super excited to share it with you. I also just you. want to point out that my uh, Berta subscription is for the Berta German issue. I don't actually get like the English or the other translated issues. I prefer the original German Berta issue because it has got a different type of binding which has got better shelf appeal which I'll just show you. Okay so this is the English um, subscription that I used to get before and I keep my uh, sewing magazines in a cupboard in these caddies one for each year and with these ones it's very hard for me to see when I just open my cupboard door which one it is but with the German issue here we go look at that I can easily see which issue it is that I want so I think that the German issues have got better shelf appeal um, than the other ones but that's just a personal um, thing for me so naturally they do change all of the covers so if you're following along with me and you're thinking oh my gosh that's not the better that I have is because they use a different cover on each different um, translation so here we go 12 months of birder 2019 and also earlier this year, when I was in Europe, I picked up the Birda Easy magazine, which I haven't had a chance to do the browse through yet. And also a chance to um, show you the patterns that I'd like to make from that. But that will be coming soon, I hope, she says. So, who can remember Birda January 2019? Um, yeah, exactly one year later. So this one, I thought that it had a good solid foundation in terms of the separates that it had. I traced out two patterns from it. I traced out sweater dress number 111 and also I traced out um, jersey dress number 114. I'm just checking my notes over there. Number 114. I sewed up the sweater dress which I absolutely loved in this um sort of textured knit fabric and it's got a funnel neck and it's got a zipper at the back and i absolutely love this and i wore this a lot in winter and even this winter i've been wearing it as well i love funnel neckline so i was very very happy with how this turned out it was a really good make so that was a, a win and ironically this one was also a very popular pattern on the birda uh, Berda Russia website and it had 47 hearts so it was the most popular pattern on there because that's how you can kind of tell which ones are the popular ones the ones that are favorited by the most people and Berda Style Russia I have got a community on there um, so that's pretty cool so this was the most liked one and that worked really well for me I'm ashamed to say that I did cut out a project I traced out the jersey dress as I say and I cut the project out but sadly <laughs> It is yet to be sewn up. Here it is, all cut up in this wonderful Lady McElroy viscose jersey. And I just have to make the time to sew this up. I can't put my finger on why I sort of um, pulled back from it. I don't want to say I fell out of love with it. I'm still excited about sewing it. Not as excited as I was before, obviously, but I just basically need to um, create a project card on my Trello to get um, this one done. So those are the two things from the January uh, 2019 issue. And there's still some things that I want to make in there, most notably 
uh, shirt dress number 108. So this one got a big thumbs up for me. It was good for me. I made a couple of, well, I made one thing, one and a half thing, I guess okay, you could call it. This is February 2019, which I thought again was a solid issue. I also really liked the colors that they used on the cover. I don't know if you can see the background of my bedroom, but it's got the similar sort of like really pale, cool colors. So I was just like, mm, and it's sort of slightly pink and I've got a pink cover. So it really appealed to me. There were three things that I actually so uh, traced out um, from this um, magazine. So I traced out dress number 115. I also traced our sweater shirt number 111 and I also traced out the shirt dress with the elasticated waist which was number 101. Okay, I sewed up the dress here and this is a, a really cute dress. So it's a John Calder crepe and just a mesh fabric that I use as contrast um, for that. I, I wore this to my girls' rainbows tea party and that was pretty awesome. And I really, really like this dress. It's very swishy and it's very feminine. Loved it. And then I also, I cut out another project, which was the sweater um, shirt that I really liked the paneled uh, sleeves that it had. And I actually cut it out, but then I kind of didn't sew it with a little bit of it. But it's, everything is here. It's got, I even bought some pale pink cord because it's got a drawstring. And, oh no, hang on, I didn't buy it. I'm recycling this from something else. And it is meant to be in a pink stripe. And then um, I was going to use a ribbon um, for the neckline uh, thingy. So I just need to make more time to sew that. And then um, the elasticated waist, uh, waist shirt dress, I didn't get to it because I just got really excited with the March issues to come along. So in terms of that, I also still want to sew number 105, the trench coat from that. It is amazing. And Diane, who blogs over at Dreamcut Sew, she made hers and it is absolutely amazing. I'll put the links in the description box down below so that you can check it. So those are the things that I still want to make from there. So... For me, bird of February, kiss a thumbs up. Bird of March 2019 got me so excited. It diverted my sewing energy from the projects that I had cut out from the February issue to the March issue. So first of all, pink and yellow, my colors were speaking totally to me. I loved it. And I also loved the... Um, the stylistic vision that they used with this because there were a lot of tropical prints and a lot of tropical fabrics which were just calling out to me. So in terms of the Berger community, um, the most uh, popular pattern was the emerald green biker jacket and that had 34 likes, 34 favorites I mean. And I can see why it's a really beautiful, beautiful style. And I definitely, I seriously considered making that, but I have too many coats um, and jackets already. So I was kind of like, make something else that you could wear daily. I traced out three items um, from this issue. So first of all, I traced out number 103, which is a simple top uh, with these puffy sleeves and a V-neck. And I made this in a uh, cotton cloud nine organic cotton lawn and this is so lovely to wear in spring and summer it's, it's a little bit creased because it was actually <laughs> i don't think i watched it the last time i wore it um but yeah so i did this one and i loved this this was a quick and easy sewing project by the way if you're looking for any quick and simple sewing project this works really well the other thing that i made was the cover pattern so this is the bird of germany on the bird of germany this one was a cover pattern and this is the wrap top which i made in a lady McElroy viscous top and this is style number one one ten so it's a sheer fabric and it's a paisley print and this this is such a flattering style i absolutely love how i feel when i'm wearing this because it's got these extra long tie belts that you tie around and i love that so that was the second thing out of the march issue that i made i also traced out the trousers style number 102 and i was going to make those in a denim but honestly i just fell out of love with this with the style there was just something about it that i didn't like and so just as i was about to cut into the fabric i was just like nah 
Now nah, this isn't happening. And I moved on to the next one. So for me, this one gets a big thumbs up. And there's still so many other styles that I would like to make in this. So dress number one, two, two with the drapey features. I definitely want to uh, make that. I also liked top number one, one, four. So this was, this is a solid, this is a really good issue as far as I'm concerned. So this one gets big thumbs up. Okay, then we moved on into April, which is my birthday month, so I was very super excited. I had high hopes for the April issue, and it didn't disappoint. So immediately, I knew that I wanted to make dress number 120, and the magazine had this bright, bold red color, and I was just like, absolutely. Um, and in terms of what was the most uh, popular, so according to the Better Style Russia website, the most popular was shirt dress number 119, and that had 60 favorites um, in it. And I really liked that one as well, but um, it's got a similar silhouette and style to the dress that I actually ended up making, which was number 120. So I traced out number 120, and I made it in cotton steel. This is my checkerboard dress. It's got like this bright yellow, bright pink, bright green, <laughs> and bright pink. And this was a technical feat for me because I actually used pink thread on the pink bits and green thread on the green bits. So normally I'm not patient enough to do stuff like that, but I did it with this because it was my birthday dress. It was my birthday month dress and I love it. And every time I wear it, I get tons of compliments and questions about where I bought this dress, you know, and it's kind of nice. I don't make my own clothes for the compliments. I make them because they make me feel good. They make me feel joyous and happy and optimistic about the world and humanity. But it's also quite nice when I then do get, you know, um, a compliment sort of like showing the congruency between how this makes me feel and how other people see it. So I love that. So just for this alone, this issue gets a big, big thumbs up. Um, yeah, so this was the only one that I traced out of this issue, actually. And the other thing that I would still like to make from this is uh, top number 105 and top number 115, of which I've got the fabric selected and I just need to trace it out and make it. So, better April 2019, just for being my birthday month and for helping me achieve one of the best birthday dresses I've ever made, get a big thumbs up. I'd also still like to make number 117. I think that's a really cute style dress and it would be fabulous in a crepe. And then we come to the May um, issue, which was the first of the 2019 issues that was just done a little bit, mm, a little bit, you know, borderline side for me. I got a lot of strong 80s vibes from it. Um, but just very quickly, according, it was the most popular pattern was dress number 108 which had 41 favorites at the time that i checked this which was about two or three weeks ago um but you know on the cover they had this big vintage style dress which i'm, I'm a big fan of the 70s 60s vintage style so i traced out from this one um dress number 103 which is a wrap dress and i was gonna make it but I somehow just didn't have the time or I fell out of love with it. I'm not too sure what happened there. Oh, no, I know what happened. I didn't have the fabric, so I just traced it out, but I hadn't actually selected a fabric. And I sort of, my, my activation energy sort of faltered when I started looking at fabrics and deciding what fabrics I might use it. And then something else caught my eye and then I just went with it. So that's kind of like me, you know, a new idea floats and I'm just, you know, I'll go and catch up with it. Um, but what I would still like to make from this is, hang on, I wrote it down. I still like to make dress number 105, which um, I'm calling it the Marmite dress because I think you will either love it or you hate it, but it needs just the right uh, sort of cotton jersey fabric for it. But it could be one of those dresses that's like super comfortable, something that you throw on all the time, or it could be just one of those dresses that you're just like, ah, don't like this. So... Uh, Brenda 5 2019 for me it guess what my daughters like to call a mixed reaction so they do this and this means it's a mixed reaction Brenda 6 2019 was it, it had some good points and some not so great points but the one thing that did save it was it had a really great kids sewing pattern section so their um 
pattern number 129 for kids, which is a simple shift dress, is absolutely really i would consider that to possibly be one of the best kids sewing patterns because it is so simple to sew up you can use a woven um, fabric or a jersey fabric i believe if you want to because i've toyed with the idea of using a jersey fabric and it just creates these lovely big pockets and it's a dress that kids can run around girls can run around and move about in and i've already made two for my twins so that's four in total and I traced it out for my friend as well, who made it for her daughter, who's the same age as my girls. So that's the saving grace for this for this uh, magazine, amongst other things. And then the other thing that was pretty lovely in it was the handkerchief hem maxi dress number one two one, which is what I'd still like to make. I really wanted to make dress number one oh one, the linen style dress. I was very gaga about it. My friend also wanted to make it and I helped her out because she was running out of time preparing for holiday sewing and I traced it out for her. And that has got so many pattern pieces, so many pattern pieces. I couldn't stomach the idea of tracing it again. We're different sizes, sadly. So I was just like, right, not going to trace that again, um, which is a bit of a shame, but that's okay. I know that my energy might come back another time, but there's a lot of other stuff that I could do. And this issue, it wasn't that popular either within the birder community, because even the most favorited pattern, which is skirt number 113, only had like 25 favorites at the time of checking and that had been months later so yeah definitely you know one of those that i don't know maybe it will be have some surprising hits later on but it wasn't as awesome as the first four so this one again it gets like um no actually i gotta give it a thumbs up because that that girls is sewing pattern that is a banger of a pattern because it's the perfect combination of simplicity and something that can just allow um the fabric to sing and it will fit easily because it's got the space for it birda july 2019 was challenging for me it was challenging because i really really struggled to bond with this magazine <laughs> with the patterns in it and it was really hard um, for me i only traced out one pattern and that was because i challenged myself to find one good thing um, from it and that was the halter neck top number 117 that i will be using to make a silk um, top which i've yet to cut out um, by the way and on the birder style community um, site the most popular pattern in this was dress number 118 with 25 um, favorites. And just everything about this did not work for me. And even the kids section, they had like these dresses that had the scalloped hems. And if you've ever done a scalloped hem, it is a nightmare to do that, to get all of the points correct. And why would you do that for a kid's sewing pattern? It was just, you know, for me, it just didn't work out on so many levels. So sadly, this was one of those issues that gets a thumbs down. Birda August 2019 was a much better showing than the July issue, which was a relief, I can say. Uh, so I liked the popping dress right at the front, and I was so very tempted to actually make this, but I do have some similar styles already, so there was no justification for me to actually just make another one and go through the process of tracing it out. I could just make remake um, the other ones in different fabrics if I wanted to. But I thought that this was quite popping. In terms of the patterns that I actually traced, I traced top number 103, which has got those, you know, the blousy, voluminous raccoon sleeve um, thingies. But I haven't yet sewn it because I haven't yet chosen a fabric. I sort of, I vacillated between fabric A, B, C, and D as I tend to do. And so then the next thing came along for me to sew, which is a bit of a problem that I need to start working on. Um, but I thought that overall there was at least 50% of things that I could make here. And this issue, it also had some really banging kids sewing patterns as well, especially code number 130. If you're the sort of person who likes to make codes for your kids, then that's a fantastic pattern. I do not make coats for my kids. I'd rather buy them secondhand on eBay or in charity shops for obvious reasons. But they had like the 
So really cute trousers, one, two, nine, and the dress, one, three, two, and the twist knot sweater, one, three, one, which I definitely want to make um, for my girls. But, you know, it... Mm, it was all right. It, it was all right. I, I thought that was this was a good solid showing. Plus, it also helps that it came after um, after that one over there. And that kind of like skews your perception a bit because it was just kind of like I'm holding my breath. Whew, it's not as bad. Um, so this this gets like a, you know, not a very enthusiastic thumbs up, but more like a. Uh, Burden 9, 2019, September 2019, back to school month, Burden. Um, this issue, possibly my favorite um, of the year. Um, and yeah, there were some really, really fantastic bangers in this particular issue. So in terms of what I traced out, I traced out dress number 107, which I'm going to be making in this amazing geometric print cotton lawn. And that dress is just going to be so absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait. So I traced that one out and I haven't yet traced anything else out because what I've realized is I seem to get busier as the year progresses and especially summer summer seems to really put a kink in my free time um but yeah i definitely have plans to uh trace out number 105b i absolutely loved that i also liked number 116 and i also want to make number 106 and it's got like that amazing trench coat which i definitely would love to make as a long-term project maybe like a 12-month project i don't know but yeah i thought that this was a really really good issue and this is the issue that probably made my subscription worth it so what are we going to give you i'm going to give you a nice big enthusiastic thumbs up and sliding nicely into october lovely popping colors which um belied what you would find inside because this is the famous one of the amish paradise um photo shoot but that aside i did like quite a lot of the styles that were in there and i don't know what it was about october i think that the sewing goddesses were smiling upon me because i actually traced out four items from this issue because i just did a tracing marathon and so i traced skirt number 120 which is even for me um a self confessed challenge addict i love challenging myself i can it's really hard to try and figure out how the seams come together it's kind of like an origami style thingy and um so yeah so i've been struggling with that one <laughs> and then i also traced out number 106 b and i also traced out number 104 and i also traced out dress number 117 which isn't the petite size so i was very very ambitious but didn't have as much sewing time obviously because then i didn't end up actually sewing it um but i thought that this was quite um it was a solid step there were definitely those patterns that i really wanted to make and i started the process of making them but not to worry the nice thing about birda is i do get back to them and sew them it's not a case of you know just because the year is over i'm not going to sew them so so birda 10 2019 gets a thumbs up birda 11 2019 was um, it had a couple of great things about it, but there wasn't anything in there that I was like, I must immediately make it like I felt compelled that I had to get my tracing. I had to make the time to actually trace uh, anything out. And consequently, um, it's one of, I think it's the only, it's the only issue that hasn't had the pattern sheet taken out or anything traced out um, from it looking at the styles as i did when i was preparing for this video i still do want to make skirt number triple one a i think that would look really nice in a in a lightweight crepe and it would just be floaty i think that would look fabulous and you know in an alternate universe where i have all the time in the world i'd probably love to have a go at number 119 because it does look really fabulous on the model um in Birda 11 2019. So 11 2019, you kind of get a um, uh, thumbs down, thumbs up and a thumbs down. 
which levels out to a meh, you know. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. But at the same time, I wasn't like, um, So yeah, meh. Verdict 12, 2019 was upon second inspection after I'd given myself a bit of space from it. Surprisingly, a decent issue. So initially, I think I was suffering from bird of fatigue because, you know, you're kind of like getting them every single month and it's kind of like, oh, what can I sew? What am I not going to sew? So I think I think that the December issue will always have that handicap. And somebody also pointed out when I was a bit like, oh, these are simple styles. Somebody very helpfully pointed out that the designers probably realized that, you know, most of the Western world in which they sell these uh, magazines celebrate Christmas or the holidays of Christmas. And then, you know, other places have got other things like Thanksgiving, etc. So people tend to have less time to be sewing than usual. So what's the point of throwing complicated sewing patterns at them? And I was just like, actually, that makes a lot of sense, you know. But when I came back to look at it, so first of all, I thought that this had a banging kids pattern section. I absolutely love the kids pattern section and I would make every single one of those for my girls. And in fact, I did trace out number 128 to make some dresses for them with a the viscous uh, fabric. And I also traced out the cocoon style cardigan number 132 to make some cocoon um, cardigans for them, which are in the process of being made. And in terms of other things that I would like to sew, I actually really like dress number 117. I'm definitely going to trace that out at some point. And I think that dress number 108 could be a little fun to make, even though it's on the bias. And I probably need to challenge myself to sew on the bias. But there are a lot of things in there that when I was looking back at it, I was just like, actually... I could make these work once I'd had that space and I'd taken myself um, away from that. So, Breda, uh, 12, 2019, December issue, you get a thumbs up with a half a smile. Not quite a, but... So in terms of Breda 2019, the actual made garments, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five actual sewn up garments. And then I've got two cut out garments that I just need to kick myself up in the butt and go and sew. And then I've got loads of traced patterns that I actually need to get onto. And so it kind of feels a lot less than I thought, personally speaking, but that's okay. So I think that um, upon reflection now, one of the things that I do want to try and do is to be more consistent with sewing one from the current month but i'm not going to be too pushy about it i don't do well with uh, goals that are too uh, constricted i like to have some flexibility in there okay so another thing that i thought would be a lot of fun would be to share with you what i thought was the best photo shoot so one of the things that i like about um, the Berta magazines is the fashion element to it you're not just getting sewing patterns you're also getting a fashion element and Berta, out of all of the sewing magazines you can't beat their production values. They will go on set to shoot in Cape Town, in Athens, in all different parts of the world to create this very hot couture or, you know, a Vogue-esque style thing. So I do appreciate that. So some of the, the interpretations, I might be a bit like, oh, what's going on here? But I will always respect and admire people showing up and trying to do their best, even if sometimes that best just looks a little bit weird and awkward to me. So, burst burden issue of the year, September 2019. This is going to be a classic issue that people 10, 15, 20 years from now will still be sewing from and they will still be talking about Burda 29, 2019 was one of the great one one of the great issues in my opinion um every single thing in there i would make if you're interested in capsule wardrobes this is the one to go for because just about every um separates that they have in there they can work well together to create a capsule wardrobe 
So that's the best one. Worst one of 2019. Yeah, I guessed it. It's 7 2019. Really did not like this. And you can tell because even across the bird at different communities, the most um, a pattern has been favorited from the uh, July 2019 issues about the 25 favorites, whereas some of the issues have got favorites in excess of 80 or 90 <laughs> favorites. So this, this one is only staying in my collection because I am a completist. A bird, a completist, is somebody who just wants to have the complete 12 issues for each year, regardless of whether they're good quality or whether they will sew from them. At the moment, I'm a completist, not a collector. At some point in the future, when I feel like I've had enough uh, full year sets, I will become a collector wherein I will just pick and choose issues that have things that I like. But for now, I'm a completist. If there's a pattern that you want to make from here, I would advise get the PDF or unless if you're somebody who likes this pattern, maybe I'm seeing something. So, you know, remember, this is just a personal opinion. But yeah, so best of Berda 2019. And to me, this was the worst of Berda 2019. So the best fabric selections used for a particular photo shoot was in the Berda March 2019 issue. They were doing all of these tropical themes and the emerald greens and they had some really lovely fabrics that I was looking for and trying to find and find them I did. Did I buy them? No, because most of them were incredibly expensive in excess of like 75 pounds per meter. So I just had to gaze at them from afar, but they had some really beautiful fabric selections in the March 2019 issue. That was my favorite in terms of the fabrics, hands down. Most memorable cover for me, and remember this is a bird of Germany that I'm going with. So if you're using the English one, that might be a little bit different, but still. So for me, I couldn't just, there were two memorable covers um, in this year. And here are my reasons why these stick out for me. So for the most part, I find that the models that they use on the covers are so interchangeable. I don't remember the covers based on the faces on them, but I remember the covers based on the colors of the writing. But these two, when I think about them, I see these faces very clearly um, in my mind, which almost never happens with most um, of these uh, sewing magazines, you know, um, because it's more about the dresses rather than the people themselves. But first off was April. And that was because that's the first time I've ever seen a older woman on the cover. And it's an older woman with silver hair. And I just thought that this was quite memorable because as you know the fashion world is not very kind the older you get you know you become a little bit more invisible so this was quite um you know i thought that this was quite forward and it was also done in a very nice way so i always remember this one plus it's also my birthday month so there might be a little bit of that playing um in but yeah that was pretty cool and then the other one was this one and this one simply caught my eye because it's big curly 80s style hair on there which i haven't seen in a long time, in a while, this big curly is, I think, I think you guys would call it a perm, but yeah, so this sort of like really stuck out for me. Plus it's also a really stellar issue. It's just like a really banging issue. So yeah, most memorable covers of 2019. Most confusing photo shoot. So no matter how many times I've browsed through this issue and I browsed through it a lot of times trying to find something that I liked, there was always one photo shoot that just had me confused and I even got my husband to look at it and we tried to analyze what was wrong with it and it was from the July 2019 issue and it's the power pose one, okay? So let me just dissect it for you, right? It kind of looks like they're standing in their bedroom, fine. It looks like it's been taken through a glass. So the perspective of the person who's reading this is kind of like a peeping Tom. But then there she is doing a power pose, which is pretty awesome in itself. And, you know, there's the chap right there and he's just kind of like chilling. But I don't know what he's doing, fiddling with his watch. And he's like looking at her and she's like looking out. <laughs> To this day, this still gets me um, so much so that when there's a bit of a funny, confusing uh, situation, it's become an in-joke with my husband where I just go like power pose and gaze off in a weird direction. And then, you know, it's become sort of like an in-joke. So 
most confusing photo shoot goes to July 2019. <laughs> most artistic photo shoot i'd love the artistry that goes into how they put the magazine together even if i may not necessarily always like the patterns or the styles themselves i still appreciate the work that goes into creating uh, some of these concepts and it also i can appreciate that it is not easy to do this every single month and still and try and keep things fresh as well um so the most artistic one is from april 2019 and i loved how they did this photo shoot with the horses and the jacket and it just you know it just took it onto another level onto another playing field so it was just absolutely fantastic and even the range of patterns that were in this particular shoot they were all that much more attractive because of how they were um because of how they were shown and that's the dress that i ended up making but yeah it was just a fabulous one so this was one of what i considered to be the most artistic photo shoot of 2019 it was hard to pick this one. There were a few others that were like this close, but this one ultimately triumphed. I have this category called my You Should Have Known Better Birder. <laughs> and that's just basically an obvious mistake that seriously had no business being allowed past the quality control. And that's from Birder 10 2019. So interestingly enough, Birder 10 2019 very closely made it into the most confusing um, category. And that's because, if you may allow me a little diversion, that's where they did the what I like to call the Amish Paradise photo shoot, which was just really quite um, confused. Well, it was confusing, but in kind of like a hilarious way, um, especially my favorite a uh, confusing one was um, this one where we're trying to be sexy but we kind of can't because we're espousing Puritan values so that was quite funny um, that so this was so close so close where it got edged out by the power pose and you know um, the chappy doing the thing but my should have known better birder like how on earth was this even allowed to get past the all of the processes all of the people who have to look at this before this goes out was this shirt in this photo shoot that is like three four sizes too big look at that look at that i was just like mm. and then when you look even closer you can see that this shirt is too big for him because it's been rolled up i don't know how many times and all so my theory allow me my theory is that they were doing the photo shoot and the guy who was supposed to turn up the model who had been hired to turn up for this actually didn't rock up and they'd hired this place to do the photo shoot so they were running out of time so they were just like we just need any guy you know oh who's that intern grab that intern over here you know and the intern was like what what what, what? and they're like put on this shirt and he's like oh it's too big and they're like don't worry we'll roll it up and then they rolled it up and then they took the pictures um with him I don't know, he might be a real model, I have no idea, but I do not understand how um, a high quality print production like Birda could possibly, possibly print something with a shirt. And I went and I checked the trends, by the way, because I thought maybe it's because I don't keep up with fashion and I don't actually know that now men's fashion is that the collars have to be too big. You know, so I went and I checked to make sure that, you know, it wasn't just me being, you know, not fashion conscious but it turns out no you know collars that fit around a men's neck are still a thing thank goodness for that but yeah that is my should have known better birder award so those are my thoughts on birder 2019 it has been a fun birder year for me and i just want to thank each and every single one of you who watches these uh videos and my ramblings and my thoughts on sewing and sewing with birder and sewing magazines i really really do appreciate that um and now it's your turn why don't you let me know which ones were your favorite which ones were your most favorite covers in the comments box down below and thank you so much for watching part one of my birder 2019 so i'm gonna go straight away and i'm gonna film a uh, part two where i am going to show you all of the other 
non-2019 Berda makes that I have made because the beauty about Berda, of course, is you can sew for years um, from it. So until I see you next time, guys, happy sewing. And do remember to share your favorites in the comments box down below. Bye.